everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I haven't been in my kitchen in a while. I think I've done a couple videos here, but um, since I'm actually talking about kitchens today, I thought it would be a good idea to sit in my kitchen. So um, anyway, let's get started. Ooh, hi, Tamara. Welcome from Ireland. <laughs> um, and uh, anyone else joining us, feel free to put a reaction or type comments. I can see them um, and can um, do follow up questions if you have them as we go through this. But today I really wanted to talk about how to get some flow in your kitchen. I have a lot of clients that just kind of put things in cabinets behind doors and don't really think about how stuff works together. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. But first I want to remind you to not to forget to go to morethanorganized.net. There's lots of resources there and some other blog posts about kitchen organizing. Um, on there so you can go a little bit more in depth if you want um, and find out other ways I might be able to help you in your kitchen. Um, the main thing we're gonna do is apply the streamline solution, which I've talked about a little bit um, on other videos and just how to start the process of organizing. So many people only do a couple of the steps. You know, there's five or six steps depending on the project to get truly organized with a space and if you just jump right in and buy containers and start putting your stuff into the containers, you've skipped three or four of the steps and then you're not going to get the result you're really wanting. So we're going to apply it to the kitchen. Um, the only thing that's a little different in the kitchen sometimes is that because of giant appliances or giant quantities that come from Costco or whatever, occasionally you need to do a little bit of space and size adjustment um, for particular things, but we still then just look forward to uh, putting them as near to the um, zone of use as possible. So as always, we start with um, with with um, talking about what what it is about the area that you're trying to organize. What are the problems with it? Kitchens tend to be a huge problem area because like I said, you either put stuff away without really thinking through where it's going in conjunction with the other items in there. Um, uh, intelligent adjacency is one of those concepts that you can use in the kitchen to great effect. That's where you put things that are used together or that prompt you to think of the next step um, when you have them near each other. So that's basically what we want to do in the kitchen is have that concept of zones or areas of work. And there's a few different kinds of work that happen in the kitchen. But before we even get to that, you need to define what a kitchen actually is. Um, and taking the time to set up your kitchen can support you and your family. Because if you have a happy, healthy family, you have a happy, healthy life. And so taking the time to set up the kitchen right um, is well worth it. Um, and it's one of the areas we spend the most time in. So you want to have it set up so that you save as much time as possible. Um, and as always, the first step in the streamline system is actually to define the space. What are the activities you're going to do in that space? Um, for some people, it involves kids' homework. For other people, it does not. So just know what you do in your kitchen and what things need to be stored in the kitchen and which things may be or transitory coming to and from the kitchen as you do those activities. So I happen to love Martha Stewart's definition of what a kitchen is, and she defines it as a place to celebrate the rituals of cooking and eating. Um, and I just think that's so fantastic because part of staying organized longer term and simplifying your life and using this streamlined solution is to see where the connections happen. And if you think of it as ritual, it can blend in a lot of mindfulness practice into your kitchen, which can then keep you focused in other areas as well. So you can be eating healthier, and um, getting some focus from from just using your kitchen in the in the um, streamlined way. So the kitchen is is that the the celebrate the cooking rituals um, and eating rituals, and the pantry is technically a place for the storage of ingredients and equipment. Um, and so sometimes there are a little bit of overlap. Um, I don't have a separate pantry. I have two shelves behind me. I'll show you in just a minute. Um, but think of it as pantry is for storage, kitchen is for um, the, the actual rituals of cooking and eating. Um, so that can help uh, just in defining the space to help figure out where things go. Now, one of the main things 
like um, the pantry, the storage of ingredients, is you have a bunch of storage things in the kitchen. And it's an area that people sometimes go a little bit overboard with storage. I need to store a lot of things. But if you think of it in terms of what the activities are, you have to store ingredients. You need to store leftovers. And then you have wraps and containers. And what kinds of wraps and containers are going to help the storage of ingredients and leftovers be more possible? Um, you don't want to just find a bunch of con storage containers for the sake of storage containers. You want to find things that are going to help you do the things you do in a kitchen. So you're going to store ingredients and you're going to store leftovers. And other than that, I'm not sure what you're storing in the kitchen. Other storage should be elsewhere if it's, you know, just for the sake of keeping something. Um, all right. Then we have preparation, the preparation of the food, the actual um, measuring, cutting, mixing and scooping of the ingredients into a recipe, into a meal. Um, and so that's something you have to consider as well. There's a lot of tools involved with the preparation of your meals. And for some of us, we do a lot of cooking and for others, do almost no cooking. So I'm one of those weird anomalies. I can cook really well, but because I live alone, I don't do a whole lot of uh, extensive cooking, but I could. Technically, I could feed 20 people with the stuff I have in my kitchen, um, but I don't have to very often. So I have things placed in a little bit different order than I would if I was a family of seven cooking for my family every week. Does that make sense? You just want to think through how you're going to do your preparation and what kinds of things you prep for. All right. Um, the next thing you do is the actual cooking. So you prepare the ingredients to put into something that goes in the oven or on top of the stove. That's what cooking is. You may have some specialty appliances as well that that help with that. But basically cooking is the pots and pans and the stirring while it's cooking and the baking. Um, so how many of those things do you need? I have a lot of clients I find surprising. Um, and it's, it's not because they aren't aware of it. It's one of those connections that doesn't quite make the grade when people first set up a household sometimes though. And that is if you have a set of pots and pans and then you have a set of bakeware in glass, and then you also have a set of bakeware in corningware or whitewares, and then you also have a set of bakeware in metal, and then you store them all in different places, like the glass is over there and the ceramics are over there and the metal's back there, you don't see which pans you can use for what purpose easily. Um, and people are sometimes surprised when I say, well, you can go ahead and cook in the whiteware and put it in the fridge afterwards with the lid, or you can put some foil over the top. Um, and so instead of having to use 27 different things, you can use a couple of things and get rid of the duplicates, not just of metal cookie sheets, but of anything you could use to bake something on. So. If you are keeping extra cookie sheets to roast um, something on or to do biscuits on or any of the other little things you might be putting in the oven, maybe one of your whiteware au gratin pans will serve the same function. So then you can let go of one of the cookie sheets. So just know the purpose of the thing is more important in kitchen storage um, and accessibility than the material it's made out of. OK, so that's one of those places where people, for whatever reason, I think because it's on display in the store that way, you tend to group things by what they're made out of instead of how you're going to use it. So keep that in mind in the kitchen, especially with the cookware. Um, then you're also going to want to create some spots for the serving pieces and serving pieces. Again, there's going to be some duplicate with the um, bakeware. Um, but we also have glassware. What do you drink your liquids out of? You know, mugs and, and tumblers and, and wine glasses. You can have dinnerware. That is the actual plates and bowls. Um, you can have flatware. Technically, flatware is the utensils you use, the knife, spoon, fork. Um, and uh, utensils are the things for stirring and, and, and um, serving and um, mixing. Um, serving pieces might be a platter or a larger bowl for a salad, that kind of thing. And then the linens, you know, do you have napkins, tablecloths, runners, placemats? Those are the serving pieces that need to be stored. They do not need to be stored near the dishwasher. They need to be stored near the table. So all of those things can be moved out of the prime area between the fridge and the sink and moved over to the other end of the counter where you're on your way out of the kitchen to the table. So that's something else to, to consider. 
um, it, it can go a little bit farther away. Um, and then in the kitchen, we also have to clean because once you finish cooking and eating, there's a mess. There's a bunch of stuff to put through the dishwasher or run through the sinks. I don't have a dishwasher. Um, and end up clean on the other side so that it's ready to use again. And just like with productivity, I love to think about the stuff in my kitchen as what can I make easier for next time? So is it cleaning it differently? Is it stacking it differently in the um, cabinet when I go to put it away? What can I do to make it easier next time? Rarely does that involve stacking something large on top of something small. Rarely does it involve buying one more thing to stuff under the kitchen sink that's gonna make me clean. <laughs> um, usually cleaning is just the simplest form of getting it through um, some water and putting it away. Um, but other things that pile up in people's kitchens around cleaning is thinking through that trash recycling and um, composting center you may have set up. How are you going to work that out to the curbside? Um, and, and just thinking of it through um, can help you come up with some solutions instead of as the afterthought of, oh, well, I just did a bunch of cooking, now I need to clean. Maybe it makes more sense to have your little compost pot right by your cutting board than under the sink so that you can transfer it as soon as you do your dishes at the end of the night and you don't have a big, giant buildup of composting material. Maybe your recycling should be right next to the trash can until you get in the habit of putting your recycling um, in into um, the proper bins. So just think that through. Cleaning is in of itself a whole thing. You also probably don't need to store the dusting materials in the kitchen. So think through, you know, which cleaning items make sense in the kitchen versus which cleaning materials make sense in a more centralized location for the rest of the house. Does it make sense to keep your vacuum bags under the kitchen sink? Maybe it makes more sense in the pantry or the coat closet if that's where you store your vacuum. So think through those kinds of things as well. All right, now, of course, there's always the customized part of it. You want to have a little bit of customization involved. I don't have kids, so I don't have to have a kid's dish and sippy cup area, but I do have pets, so I have a little area in my pantry just for the pet storage of their food, their enjoyment, and the rituals of feeding, cooking and feeding my pets. Um, feeding, you know, cooking for them means just measuring the food into their bowl, but it's still that process of adding the food to a serving piece that they can eat out of. So just keep it simple by thinking through what the activity is, how you're gonna use it. Um, you can see behind me, uh, the pointing is opposite when I'm looking in the video. That's a coffee center. I drink a lot of coffee and tea. I have mugs, uh, teacups, and the tea on top of it, and then I have a thermos for my coffee, a French press, and my hot pot. And that is my entire coffee tea situation. It's all right there, ready for the morning and for use all day long. So. Just think what kind of centers you can create. Do you do a lot of baking? A baking center may make more sense to you than a whole setup for cooking in the crock pot. If you make more crock pot meals, maybe you want a whole situation where it's really easy to use your crock pot. So think through what will work for you, what kind of cooking you do, what kind of entertaining you do, and that can inform where you keep things and how many of those things to keep and what styles. If you have a lot of kids, you may not want to have a lot of glassware. You may want some more plasticware. And then as they grow up, you may want to get rid of all the plastic and go back to classroom. That's the kind of thing that, that can help. Um, all right, so I think that's all I want to say in this particular video about kitchen, kitchen flow and zones. It's all about the actual activities you are going to be doing. And so think that through first and it'll inform your setup and then keeping like things together. All right, again, don't forget to join the email list over at morethanorganized.net. Get links to this video, other videos, lots of information and upcoming workshops when you join that email list. You get preferential treatment that way. All right, thanks for dropping by. Take care. Bye-bye.